Hey guys, welcome to another Server Miner plugin tutorial. I'm your host LGGym007 and today we're looking at the Kit PvP plugin. So this is a fantastic plugin which allows you to play Kit PvP on your server. It's got a ton of features and it's just fantastic. So in front of me we've got the signs and we're going to show you how to make them. So up at the top we want Kit PvP in square bracket and then if we want a Kit sign put Kit on the second line and the Kit name on the third line. Then we can create a refill sign, so do the same on the top line and put refill on the second line to refill your soup. Then we can create a clear sign, so follow the same procedure, clear on the second line to clear your kit. Then we can create a stat sign and finally we can create a menu sign to open up the GUI menu to choose a new kit. So all very straightforward and they look pretty cool. So let's have a look at Kit Ninja. So if we right click the sign we just created, making sure to capitalize any letters, otherwise it won't work, we can see a really cool kit. Then if we open the refill sign, we can see loads of different mushroom soups we can grab. We can clear our kit, we can view our stats. As you can see in chat, I haven't actually killed anyone yet. And then finally, we can open the menu to see all of the kits and we can customize this in the config file as well. If we click the Rhino kit, you can see this one's customized as well. It has a really cool ability it's called Stampede, so like a rhino you can charge at people and obviously you've got a ton of mushroom soup as well. So if we clear that we can look at the kit selector in our inventory and the return to hub button. So you can click this to return to back to the spawn point if you want. If we do forward slash kp help we can see all of the commands. There is quite a few and they're all pretty straightforward. So first of all, we're going to set the spawn point of the world. So we do forward slash kp add spawn, and that will set the spawn point for your players in this world. So what else can we do? Well, we can create our own kit, um, either in the config file or in game. So just go ahead and grab all the different weapons, potions, armor, everything you want. You can really go crazy. Just add as many things as you want. So let's grab maybe some diamond armor as well. And once you've done this, all you need to do is the command forward slash kp create and then call it something. Let's call it kit server miner. Hit enter and there we go. Kit server miner has successfully been created. So if you want to get a kit via a command, you can do forward slash kp kit and then the name. Uh, let's go with kit test, which I created earlier. And as you can see, it's just got a few different items here. So if you want to preview a kit, you can do forward slash kp preview and then ninja, for example. And that's going to show you everything that comes in the kit before you actually take it, which is pretty cool. Um, or you can just hover over it and it tells you about the kit. And finally, if you want to go back to the spawn, you can do forward slash kp spawn. In five seconds, you'll be teleported to the spawn point of the world that we set. And you can change that countdown time in the config as well. So that is pretty much everything in game. Let's go ahead and go into the config files. There's quite a few and see what we can change in there. So here we are in the SM Pitnik control panel. And as you can see, there are a ton of YML files. Thankfully, they're all pretty straightforward. But if we start in the kits folder, each different kit is going to have its own file. So this makes it really easy to edit them and create new ones. Obviously you can do that in game or you can tweak them in the config files. Uh, you can see down at the bottom is the test one that I created. So let's look at Kangaroo for example, have a look, see what's in here. Up at the top we've got the permission, level and cooldown requirement. Then we've got the inventory, so all the different items you'll get in this kit. And then any potions and other stuff you get. So let's look at the abilities.yml in here. So certain classes have special abilities such as the archer having fire arrows, the soldier having a gun, the bomber having TNT, etc. So you can see them all in here with their different items and sounds and messages, etc. Um, so you don't really need to edit any of that. Let's go back and look at the config.yml. So in here you can change quite a lot of things. We've got some information to do with combat, sounds and messages up here. And then what happens when you kill someone, what happens when you die. So there's messages, there's commands that are performed. Um, and obviously you can change the title, subtitle, time, etc. Customize it. And then we've got lots of messages when certain things happen. What happens when you respawn and what does the player tracker look like and what does it say in chat. Then we have the arena so you can enable and disable certain things such as preventing hunger, full damage, death drops, etc. Um, so you can just customize this to your liking. Then we have the spawn time and do you want to store it in a MySQL database? Down at the bottom we have the items that they are given. So we are given a kit selector in slot 0 
and a leave button in slot 8. And let's have a look at the kill streaks now. So once you get on a kill streak, some things are going to happen. So there'll be a message in chat. They there'll be a subtitle and title and also a sound so you can disable this if you want but I think it's pretty cool uh, you could add more so you could add 3, 6, 9, 12, 20, 25 etc and then end streaks so when you end someone's streak it will let them know as well go back and let's look at the levels.yml so in here we can have the amount of levels so there is 100 you could obviously disable this if you want um, but you could have certain classes unlocked at certain levels. Um, as we saw in the kits YML files, we are going to look at the menu.yml. So in here, it's going to have all of the different kits. It's got the size of the GUI and the title. So make sure if you create a new kit to add it in here. So my kit test is currently not in here, uh, but obviously we could copy and paste an existing one, change a few names and make sure you change the slot as well. Otherwise they will overlap and you could have issues with that. Let's go back and go into the messages.yml. So not much in here, it's just going to be all the messages that happen when you do something or write something in chat, etc. Let's have a look at the scoreboard.yml now. So this is going to appear on the right. We saw it in game, it looks very nice. Uh, make sure at the bottom you change this to your actual server IP address. Um, and then we've got all of the name, kills, death, KD, etc. So you could change this, you could change color code. Then we have the signs. So how are the signs going to look like? They all look pretty nice as they are, but you could obviously change them and it gives a list of all the ones that exist and what world they're in. Finally, we have the stats.yml. So in here, we are going to have stats of every single player. Obviously, there hasn't been any fights uh, on my server so far, so that's why it's all zero but on your server, you'd have all of your players and all of their stats in there. So that is everything in the config files. There is lots of them, but as um, as you can see, they're pretty straightforward. If we go into the Spigot page, you can see it's updated to the latest version of Minecraft. There's loads of information on here. There's loads of new features as well, which is really cool. Um, but if you have any issues with this, contact the developer. And if you need a server to host it, on check out serverminer.com for the best and cheapest hosting around. But that's it for me. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you next time.